Welcome to Community VOD Review. If you'd like to join, please join in the Discord in the description below and click on Community VOD. That's where you can place your VOD and we will review it every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for Better Gamer. Today, we're working with Aimless999. That's right. If you'd like to follow him on social media, follow him at Aimless999. All right, so off the bat, we got four dead. So the second that you spawn in and you see that we have four dead, just taking a look at our map real quick, we can see this guy pushing through on the right. Looks like he might be inside embassy and he's gonna be running into a few enemies. Uh, we have a teammate looking like he's up middle. And then of course we have a teammate looking over him to ideally soak up time. Right here, there's two things you need to do. Either you need to get to the hard point time to soak up time, or you just need to quickly fill in this lane, get onto Xbox, and when you sit on Xbox, you can cut middle. And if you get into a situation like this, this is gonna be killer, because you have a teammate looking over hill, you're looking at the middle cut, and then we have a teammate in time soaking up time. So let's go ahead and press play, see what happens. All right, our teammate gets on time. So right there, our teammate should have said, I'm grabbing time, and based on that, you could have then rotated over here, sit on Xbox, and then again, look for that mill cut, and then of course, look for any rotators uh, if they're rotating early. So as we press forward, we're going out into this middle. Very tough gunfights, but you got good damage down. Ideally, because uh, we're on defense, these guys have to push us, and we're gonna win those gunfights. 30 seconds left, you're already making a decision to rotate, and this is perfect right here. Good movement, good bobbing and weaving. Oh, okay, that sucks. <laughs> so you had two different players over there at that uh, bridge site or over there at Milk and Bridge. So you kind of did your best. They know where you are. You're going to be in a 2v1. I would say maybe next time try to drop, uh, drop down in the back alley and then push up and play for that 1v1 gunfight instead of having to focus both middle and bridge. So basically, instead of focusing on two spots you can get shot from, just drop down and focus on the one spot uh, you need to focus on. Okay, so unfortunate that our teammate died at truck because that is a very important power position. And then right there, uh, we just got to understand that we're all dead in the kill feed. These guys rotated for P2. You even died at, um, you know, bridge knowing that they're at P2. You died there twice. So we just got to take our time now and understand is play for kills, right? Look for those kills, play for them. Um, right here, you're deciding to rotate and play for white truck. No issues with that. You can absolutely go for that. Um, however, I want to point out something that you could do uh, to potentially better your team, and that's playing for a spread hit. And what I mean by playing for a spread hit is right here, you can push across bridge, and when you push across bridge, you're flanking the enemies from top uh, milk. You then have two teammates pushing up middle and they're working that together. So ideally you have an AR looking over your teammate while a sub player pushes up and tries to fight Hill. And then you would also have a teammate over here fighting white truck. And ideally what we get is we're attacking the enemies on all four sides. So they have to worry about all four sides. And that's where we could potentially get maybe four dead and the rest of hard point time. Now we're finally going for a spread hit, but there's something that's gonna be really bad right now. We're either going to all die, they get scrap, and they win rotations, or we're gonna get all the kills, we're gonna soak up about 20 seconds of time, but they're gonna win the rotations again. So, right here, it's a hard play to you know decide what happens. We really gotta win gunfights this time around, and thankfully we do. That's three dead, and just by getting three dead, this is what I meant, how we're gonna get 20 seconds left of time, but all of these enemies right now are spawning out over here at bottom embassy, and they're gonna be um, influenced to basically push up towards orange and tennis court to get to P3. Uh, so right here, off spawn, or off of them dying and looking at your kill feed, you should be looking for this middle cut right here. Um, and a huge shout out to your teammate top bridge that's rotating back and getting to that power position because uh, he got a kill and that's all four dead. And right there, maybe dolphin dive to that um, head glitch so you get there sooner and then play for that gunfight. But either way, good job getting that damage down, making those enemies worry about you middle. You got your teammate a nice, beautiful three piece. We got two dead, three dead, four dead. So with that right there, look at the kill feed, four dead. We just need to simply get into time, right? So 
Our teammate needs to just lay down on time, hold his bridge push, and then you could go up top orange, get onto his head glitch, hold over his bridge push, or you can just simply, you know, lay down and watch your flank. All right. So here's Call of Duty spawns being Call of Duty spawns. For some reason, your teammate spawns at milk. And right now, the enemy spawned out at P2, and you had a player push middle. Good cut. Um, right now, I would just look at this and understand that these guys are basically spawning behind me, and they're about to push up behind me. Um, an issue right there is more than likely because this player wasn't blocking spawns. Uh, so that's a, that's a scenario where it's, guys, hey, 30 seconds left. Let's make sure we're blocking these spawns so the enemies can't rotate. Because uh, right here, we basically gave the enemies spawns for new, and we gave them a free rotation simply because we didn't block anchor spawns. So I just want to point out, um, we know that they're already here. Good job using your grenades. Try to, you know, cause some uh, disruption. That guy right there, I just want to point out, the fact that you threw that stun grenade forced that guy to kind of probably, like, turn around. Um, he also heard your teammate shooting on time, so he turned around. But right there, next time, when you get close up, climb up this ladder and shoot him from above, right? He already knows that you're pushing up in this direction. He knows to aim right here. So you're kind of stuck in a bad gunfight. Next time, climb up the ladder and then go for that kill above. That would be a really excellent play. I'm just trying to get time on point, bro, to be honest. All right, so right here, if we just play it slow, again, we lost rotations, right? So once again, just like that P2, we lost rotations. We don't have them at all. We got to slow down and play for kills, right? So right here, next time, just tell KD, hey, I'm going to stun open those doors. Let's look for a kill or something, right? And when you stun open those doors, KD can probably get a close kill left, and then he flies in, and then you play for that trade. Uh, you're just pretty much going to always lose that because you have an AR. He has a submachine gun. All right, they are now going for a middle cut. Good kill. Good holding that iron. And these enemies are spawning in the back right now, so you're going to have two players in the hill and two players wrapping around the back, so you got to be prepared for that. And again, that's just a matter of looking at the kill feed, looking at the minimap, understanding that we are blocking all of the outer spawns, therefore those enemies are going to be spawning in the back, so we are going to have to fight you know, four enemies again. All right, yeah, and these guys right now, they're getting into a killer setup, and I just want to point out that, like, you and your team should making a, uh, should be making a valiant effort to figuring out where these enemies are, right? So we know that we killed two of the enemies. We kind of don't know where they're spawning until we spawned. So the second that we were spawning up at Tennis, that showed that those two enemies we killed are probably spawning over here at P2. And not only that, but there was one enemy that killed you sitting in time, um, you pushed up middle, there's an enemy sitting on Xbox, and then there's an also an enemy pushing up middle. So I just want to point out that, you know, based on that spawn and knowing where these enemies are spawning, you could have immediately held the pre-aim and went for this cut while your players flooded into hill and like tried to, you know, go for a flank or something like that. We won the rotations, but we lost the gunfights. We're just having a pacing issue right now. We just need to like slow down. Right now, we slowed down. We waited to get to each other, and this is actually a good team hit. We're all here for trades. This is kind of like the first time that this is happening for that P4. This is the first time that's happening it for the P2. So um, this is what I mean by controlling the pacing. It's just, guys, we don't have spawns, so let's just get together to attack and win trades. And right here, our teammate just has to win one gunfight. Unfortunately, he lost the last one gunfight he needed to win, but at least that was a good attempt at breaking that hard point. Um, so again, right here, we're actually in the advantage winning all these trades because guess what? This is a scenario where we rotated for P1. The enemies have to push us. We end up getting the first kill, therefore giving us that advantage of a 4v3 and ultimately winning the trades. Um, again, there's just a few times where we're getting two-piece when we really shouldn't, um, but at least we're starting to play as a team now towards this end. Um, good shots right here on this cut middle. Beautiful prediction on that guy. Good pre-fire. And you're playing these last 10 seconds for the rotation. Good job looking for that push-through on bridge right there. Oh, I just wish our teammates were on the rotation as well. Where are we? 
Yeah, no, man. If you had your teammates rotate with you right there, we're in a completely different scenario. You, We literally got like three dead right there. And if your teammates got to P2, we get into a setup. Guess what? We're in that setup where we probably have you on that white truck holding down this lane. We have a player on the white van uh, basically cutting all of middle. We have a player in time holding his close pinch. And then we probably have another player um, on vans or playing close holding the uh, milk lane as well, right? And that could have all happened the second we got three dead at 15 seconds. We all rotate, get into this position, and now we're going to, you know, get close to tying up the game. It quite literally looks like they just all spawned uh, bottom PD and just flooded hallway and flooded the back. And now they're at new. And right now we're back into that scenario where we're four dead. We got to play it like S&D. We got to wait until we're all four close to the hill. Play it slow, look for kills, play those trades, and ideally get to time. I kind of wish KD played his life a little bit longer, but at least Zach gets the trade. Zach dies, Sam gets the trade, and right now, the last two enemies on Hill are focused on Sam, right? Because that's the player they need to trade. So you're over here to get this beautiful pinch. That's three dead, last player on time. Um, unfortunately, we didn't see him laying down in the bush, and again, if we just got that last trade... We probably soak up the rest of this time. Uh, which, do we win the last few trades? Okay, cool. So the enemies look like they just decided to rotate. We win those last trades. That's good. Now we just got to win rotation, right? Get another four dead right here. We got two dead. Last two players are more than likely on time in an orange. Good trades. There we go. All four dead. Based on our teammate, they should be spawning out over at uh, Milk and P2. So good job going for this cut. We got two dead again. Good job holding that bottom orange cut for your teammate. Our teammate was playing a little too aggressive on time right there. That's where another communication should go down saying, guys, hey, or sorry, player on hill, I don't have your back. You're alone right now. So then that player on hill would play more of a defensive position instead of an aggressive one. Um, right there also, we could have you know made, it, uh, made a decision to push across and help our teammate on time. Uh, just because there are still 30 seconds left, and ideally you would want to have two players at hill with 30 seconds left, while two other players are either out rotating or um, playing for a cut. That's a very important call out to go for, um, but that's a good stun. And now, because we don't kill that one guy, I just want to point it out, because we don't kill that one guy back here, he is now not giving you guys spawns. And he just literally spawned your teammate out all the way in Narnia, right? So that's a situation where we got to really focus on that kill on the back just so our teammates spawn closer to us. And right now, I'm not surprised if his enemies are spawning on him. Okay, thankfully, our teammate pushed out. And spawns are going to be super sporadic right here. Where, like, right there, that's a scenario where we don't kill that one guy in the back. So, right now, the enemies are spawning tennis court. They're spawning behind us milk. We're spawning middle. It's chaos right here. Just because we don't have a guaranteed spawns or guaranteed uh, side. Uh, but, once again, we're on the attacking position where it's always going to be tough to win these gunfights. And that is GG's. All right, so the big lesson from this game is just understanding that throughout this entire game, we only rotated for four out of nine hard points. Now, that being said, two of those hard points, we got immediately broken, showing that our setup wasn't strong enough. So at the end of the day, when you really look at it, we only had two good hard points out of nine total hard points throughout this game. Um, and the little things that we can fix is simply, one, rotating sooner, making sure everyone's in a very good spot. Uh, there's a few times where we flip spawns because we didn't have an anchor and that gave the enemies a free rotation. Um, and there's just a few little things that we just want to change uh, throughout this VOD review that'll start helping us win more hardpoint holds, such as, you know, actually holding four out of nine, where I truthfully believe that. If we didn't get broken on two of those hard points and we held them down, aka P5 and P4, I truthfully believe that this number would be around 200 to 250. Thank you so much for watching. If anyone would like to follow Aimless, he's on kick at Aimless999. If you guys have any questions, please let me know, and I'm always happy to help. Thank you, and peace.